Good morning. Welcome to Biblical Focal Points. My name is David Stembaugh. I'm going to be your host for about the next 40 minutes or so. Today we're going to be looking at laying down the law, the Ten Commandments, and the Gospel, and the American Dream. Historian Bruce Shelley writes, In one hand, Lady Liberty holds the torch of freedom, and in the other tablet of law, the torch challenges the forces of darkness and tyranny. The tablet of law reminds us that liberty degenerating into license is but another form of slavery. That is the message of the Ten Commandments. God brought a despised group of people out of, bo out of bondage. <clears throat> they would not experience true liberty, however, by merely trading one form of bondage for another. Deliverance from Egypt's tyranny could easily be replaced by servitude to self and personal passions. The purpose of God's law is deliverance, not domination. The Ten Commandments are God's statues of liberty. Imagine with me the next Super Bowl, and we get there and watch whoever the teams are going to be that play, and to our surprise, we discover that the field is not set up with the traditional football lines. Some players wear helmets and toss footballs, while others wear shorts and kick a soccer ball. Some swing baseball bats as others dribble basketballs. The whistle blows to signal the beginning of the game, and each player plays a game of his own choice. We are in for a real mess. Games without rules are unthinkable. Even worse is a society without laws. Try driving anywhere if there are no traffic guidelines. Submit to surgery at the hands of a physician who never earned a standard degree. There are some don'ts which, which set us free. Our children's lives are filled with no's and don'ts and negatives because they are so loved. The no's and don'ts that teach them not to pick up a pretty flaming coal or play with an electrical outlet or to run in the parking lot are statutes are statutes of liberty to preserve and protect their best interest. The Ten Commandments are statutes of liberty to guard our good. The first four commandments are all God word. They have to do with our relationship to God. The last six are all man word. They have to do with our relationship with others. And when Jesus was asked, which commandments were the greatest? He said to love the Lord with all our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves. They sum up both the God word and man word commandments. You see, if you love God with all your heart, then it's only logical that you will put him first. Put away idols, not take his name in vain, and honor his day. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, it's only logical you won't steal from him, kill him, lie to him, fornicate with him, or be covetous of him, but rather to honor him. Why preach on the Ten Commandments? Because 97% of Americans say they are important, while only 5% can name three of them, because they are moral principles which form the best hope for America's future, because God spoke them to us in his word, because they can bring us to Christ. No, they are not a, sal a system of salvation, and no one gets saved by keeping them. How many here have ever broken one of them? Raise your hand if you have. And those who didn't raise their hand just lied and broke one in the process. God's law requires perfection. But the New Testament says that God's law brings us to Christ because you cannot be saved until you realize you are lost. And once you are lost, then Christ can find you 
and bring you into the fold. The Ten Commandments are principles that will change us and can change the world, and we ought to squeeze every drop of truth out of them that we can. There is more truth and more hope found in them than in all of Washington, D.C. Washington's answer to all of our moral problems is just spend more on education. But educating a sinner's mind without changing their heart only leads to a smarter sinner. Educate a thief's mind without changing his heart, and all you do is promote him from robbing liquor stores at gunpoint to embezzling from his company. I'm tired of the pork barrel programs of the government. We need to get back to, thus saith the Lord. If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. That's a quote from Ronald Reagan. When schools can teach sex and hand out condoms to prepubescence, but won't allow the Ten Commandments to be posted or prayers to be prayed, it's time we go back to the drawing board. When the Boy Scouts are scorned because they won't allow a homosexual to be a troop leader, it's time we get back to the basics. When the spotted owl enjoys more protection than a little baby, it's time to get back to thou shalt not kill. When presidents and politicians who lead our land cannot keep the vows they make to their own spouses, should we be surprised when they trample on their vows of office? It's time we get back to thou shalt not commit adultery. Now imagine with me what would happen if all Americans today decided to try to live by the Ten Commandments. What would our country be like? I'm not saying they get saved, just that they try to live moral lives. What would happen? For starters, most of our national problems would be a thing of the past. The crime rate would plummet. Violence and abortion would cease. Government corruption would be over. Prisons would soon be empty. Teen pregnancy, divorce, hate, racism, terrorism would all be obliterated. You could walk down any street without fear and never lock your doors at night. But America has kicked God out of school and government. And no wonder so many homes no longer have any place for him either. In his place came secular humanism, which has led to a huge moral slide in the last, in the last part of the 20th century. Church attendance has dropped dramatically, while ratings skyrocket for Jerry Springer and his endless parade of perverts. In America today, one-third of the population like his guest, one-third is like his audience, who enjoy watching them, and one-third of us just remain silent, taking down our Ten Commandments displays, being silenced, huddling into a corner, praying for the Lord to come back. In 1980, the Supreme Court ruled it unlawful to post the Ten Commandments on the wall of a school, and you've got to hear the wording of their decision. If, po if the posted copies of the Ten Commandments are to have any effect at all, it will be to induce the school children to read, meditate upon, perhaps venerate, and obey the commandments. Let me translate. You cannot display the commandment, Thou shalt not kill, because somebody might obey it. And every year, we've got major killing sprees in schools. Getting back to the Ten Commandments is the best hope for the church today. Even Bible-believing churches today are becoming increasingly powerless, ineffective, and irrelevant. What would happen if God's people would get back to living by the Ten Commandments? There would be a mighty revival. Holiness and purity would abound. And as a result, so would the power of God. Churches would again be lighthouses set on hillsides, showing the way for all in their ear. What if every Christian decided to obey the command to honor father and mother? Rebellion would no longer be as prevalent in the church as it is in the world. What if every Christian decided to obey the command to honor the Lord's day and every Sunday spent all day in God's house studying God's word with God's people? Our churches would have to launch building programs immediately. What if every Christian decided to obey the command to not steal? It would have to begin by not stealing from God. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 11. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed, you, robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. 
if I will not open you the the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. If God's people just obey this one aspect of thou shalt not steal, the church would never have a need and could do unlimited ministry around the world. And further, the people would be so much more blessed and their finances no longer cursed. What if Christians decided to obey the command to have no idols and no other gods before the Lord, deciding to put God first in every area of life? Well, we'd be happier, healthier, wealthier, and more importantly, we'd live different, look different, and act different, and would be powerful living testimonies that lost people would see and aspire to become like. The commandments are a blueprint for a beautiful life, but today people resist rules and regulations. People today have no tolerance for thou shalt nots, but I'm here to remind you today that the law and love always go together. True love shows restraint when needed. All of us humans need to realize that God is not a cosmic killjoy trying to spoil our fun. When God says, Thou shalt not, it's only because He knows that particular behavior is destructive and will bring misery into our lives. The commandments are gifts from God like a compass for direction. They give us our bearings. Without them, we are drifting. During World War II, American planes flew from British air bases to missions over Germany. Finding their way home to base was often difficult because of horrible weather conditions. Churches with tall, stately spires dotted the English landscape. On overcast days, the American pilots used the churches to guide them home. As planes descended through a gray sky, the churches told the pilots if they were on the right course. Our world is in a moral fog. The spiritual weather is horrible. The Ten Commandments are God's signpost to show us the way home. Jesus stated this clearly when he said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And if a man love me, he will keep my words. That's John chapter 14, verses 15 and 23. Those who truly love the Lord know that he commands because he cares. The, the Ten Commandments are a mirror of reality to give us a true look at ourselves. We fall short. That is why the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was necessary. The late J. Vernon McGee said, there must be shedding of blood for sin. You have a mirror in your bathroom, which is a picture of the law, and there is a basin underneath the mirror. You do not wash yourself with the mirror. It only reveals the dirt. Just so, the law is the mirror that reveals our sin, and beneath that mirror there is a wash basin. Wash basin. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners pledge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws, and try as we might, we'll never keep them perfectly. So our sins have to be paid for. And Jesus did that. Will you let the law bring you to the love of Christ today? We're going to close out with a hymn here. Higher ground.
Stay safe, be blessed, and stay in the Word.